back to back to back. Wow, this thing looks pretty. Pull that out. Water enters through the inlet, low voltage lighting. Three peat on Tiki Falls. Got bolt valves, check valves. They're super heavy. We can shoot one up if we want. We are adding water to Tiki Falls. Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy back with another aquatic adventure. Now, if you're new to the channel, we talk about everything in the aquarium hobby, and your boy's doing your solid. We're going back to back to back. Yeah, three peat on Tiki Falls 4.0. It is one of the most demanding videos. Uh, I mean, you guys are super demanding when it comes to Tiki Falls 4.0. We're going to jump into another video. Now, if you haven't seen any of the last two videos, I'll put cards up above. You'll see them flash. Go ahead and click that card and then click the next card. And this would be, I guess you can say part three. But if you guys want to see an entire playlist devoted to Tiki Falls from day one, us breaking ground and creating this beautiful masterpiece, I'll leave another card up above. It's the playlist the Tiki Falls 4.0. So without further ado, let's go back into the future. This footage is about a week ago. Me and my boy Dennis, I'm just setting the stage for you guys. Enjoy this video and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so here is the mountain tree natural ecosystem filter. We're going to come back over here and you can see my boy doing his, uh, like I said, his wizardry. I like to use that word with him because he is a wizard when it comes to all this stuff. You can see uh, everything that's going on here and check this out. The last time you guys saw it, it didn't look like this, right? This one's going to come 45 up come across tie in right here ah. to this one and that's our jets and then this one here is our skimmer and then this one here is our bottom drain so we got bulk valves check valves yeah there's our lifeline right there the pantair intel flow look at that huh yep this is our variable speed and flow pump this is the heartbeat of tiki falls 4.0 did you want to explain to everybody the flow and what's going on here this is our bottom drain okay obviously it's on the bottom that's why i placed it there because it's the bottom drain gotcha this is our skimmer both of them are going to come in we can shut off either one we want so now they're open this is a check valve so every time we open the basket to clean the basket all the water doesn't drain back into the pond so we don't have to sit here and try to prime the pump again the water comes out of the pump this way it's going to go to the jets we can shut off the jets if we want or we can throttle them back so if we want to throttle it right now it's open we can throttle it back we can have more water flow up to the mountain tree filter that's our guillotine valve you can pull that out that's open and you push it in it's closed and then the water flows up to the mountain tree on the back side and will flow through the mountain tree and drain out of those two pipes right there as and your then it goes down to the waterfall but this is the temporary waterfall right here this is the temporary waterfall thanks for explaining to the people brother now if you guys were wondering where we got these valves ball valves check valves all this good stuff here we got it at koi enterprise my boy anthony the hostess with the mostest go check him out all of his links will be down in the description below but this thing looks nice man look at the setup look at i mean he even wired the pump look at that boom it goes this way it goes right up into here we got this here look at that oh my gosh man this is uh it's actually getting kind of scary ohana it's getting scary but i love the ball valves check valves they look sweet look at this setup looks like a, a hamster house all right where is he gonna go next all right, so we picked up a couple of these Matala air stones for the pond. And what we're going to do is set them strategically. We got two of them. So I think we may set one there and maybe one there. And uh, we're gonna run the airline up through here and then we're gonna cover rock. And so that way we won't be able to see the airline. And then it's gonna go through all the way to the back there where Dennis is, yep, right over here. So I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. Pick this up at Coy Enterprise. Shout out to our boy Anthony, the hostess with the mostest. But look at these pads, huh? Woo wee. Look at that. These are legit. They're super heavy too. So they're going to weigh down to the bottom. You can see we've got our airline adapter right there. We're going to bury it, that base part, into the gravel down there. So 
Just giving you guys a heads up. So if you guys are wondering where bubbles are coming from, it's from these bad boys. There it is, right there. Matala. Hold on, let me focus in there. There we go. You guys wanna know the diameter, the connection's 3.8. There you go. Self-weighted diffuser disc. All right, so here is the airline diffuser. As you can see, we have our weighted airline hose. This airline hose is weighted, so it's not gonna float. And this is some heavy duty stuff right here. We're gonna run it up through here. We're gonna bury it in the gravel, run it up through the rocks, try to hide it and whatnot. And then we're gonna drill a hole right there where uh, our boy is. And we're gonna run that hose through there. And you can see the rest of the airline hose that he has because we have another air stone right there or air diffuser. So we have one there, kind of like in the center of the deep end of the pond. And then we have one down here towards this end of the pond. So we got our diffusers in and the weighted airline hose. You can see we have another diffuser right here. So you can see the spacing. One's down there, one's right here. And we have the weighted airline hose going up, kind of snaking through these rocks here. You're not really gonna see this airline hose. I'm gonna try to tuck it in against the rocks the best I could in between the cracks there. We're gonna run it through there and then we're gonna stack rock up here and cover the hose. You're not gonna be able to see it. This hose is super, super thick. We're running it all the way up through there and then we're gonna drill a hole in that piece of wood and run the airline hose through there. Now, if you're wondering where I got this airline hose, I got it from Koi Enterprise, our boy, Anthony. And I also wanted to show you how thick this hose is. Look at it. This is three eighths, but look how thick. Look at that. That's what's making it super heavy and weighted down. So next shot, I'm going to show you this buried. So you're not going to see the line. I'm going to get this gravel and just cover up the lines and make it look nice. There you go. Air diffuser there air diffuser there as you can see the cords are all hidden so you cannot see it all you're going to see are beautiful air bubbles coming up from the bottom of the pond not going to know where it's coming from and then you can see right there we got our weighted airline hose going up through the rocks here it's going to come up through here over the top and like we talked about earlier my boy dennis drilled holes we got the hoses running through there and then they come out on this side and what are those valves for dude so these are our air valves so say you want to move your diffuser to a shallower area well mm -hmm. there's less pressure less water pressure on that diffuser so you can restrict the amount of air going to that diffuser to force more air to the deeper diffuser and these are going to tie in here we got to get some strut clamps to to mount this so it's nice and stable so that hose goes all the way around the side and then the we'll put the our back. air pump in the back oh, so that way right. i gotta show it. you guys the air pump that we got for this too so let me go back there and i'll show you guys the air pump so here's the air pump that we're using it's a uh, alita air pump silent durable and uh wait what do we got here so this is the al40 okay they make different sizes there this is going to be a 110 uh air pump uh, you got 230, 240 volt, and the different sizes are for different CFMs. If you just take your little air pump from your aquarium at home, it won't be able to push air deep enough because the water pressure is going to keep that air back. So you need a bigger pump to get enough uh, volume to push that air mm. that deep in water. Ooh, wow, that thing looks pretty. Same yeah. one I got on mine. Fluorescent yellow. Oh, really? You got this one too? I got this exact same Ooh, one. Ooh, look at that. So there's your outlet. You got a little filter up top. Once a year, you just unscrew this, pull out that little um, that filter, bad? starts getting dirty. It's gonna turn brown. Pull that off, put a new one on. Okay. Hook this up. This is gonna get adapted to our three quarter pipe. Okay. And we're gonna mount this somewhere in here. We're probably gonna create a shelf somewhere in here for the pump. Oh, and then where and do we plug it in? We can plug it in right here. Ooh, look at that. That's what we're talking about right there. Whammo, baby. And then the cool thing about this pump, not only does it uh, supply the air, but it turns the pond over too. Yeah, as the air's lifting in the pond, what's gonna happen is it's gonna lift water with that air and so it turns over the whole pond. So it's gonna lift all that bottom water and lift it up and just turn the whole pond over. So it helps in the circulation of the pond. And then the other thing is this is a great life support. But when you have no power, you have no circulation. And if it's a really, really hot day, there's not much oxygen available for the water. So if you have a major power outage and you're down for a day or two, you can plug this into your, your battery backup that you have. Oh yeah, the battery backup, Ohana. Remember that? Ooh. So that way we can keep this uh, 
well, we can save the fish. Actually, that's just in case a power outage happens and this all shuts down, we have aeration in the pond. Dennis is working on the electrical for the low voltage lighting there. You see the light? We have the lights on right now. We have electricity in the pond, which is super cool. So all five lights are working. You can see them there. But not only that though, I know I've talked about those white circles there, um, which are going to provide the jets. So my boy Dennis is gonna take it away. He's right here and he's gonna explain to you guys what we got. We reduced it down from inch and a half to one inch. And then we have some jets on here and you can see the little nozzle inside. Hmm. And then this nozzle is a venturi. So as that water's shooting out through this, this cone, mm -hmm. it's sucking pond water in here. So it helps double the flow. Oh, nice, man. And so that goes down, screws right into that white socket that we have. We have a total of five of them in the pond. And then we could actually, once it's in, we could adjust it and make the flow shoot down so we have no dead spots we have a nice current we can shoot one up if we want but we don't need to we're all gonna pretty much shoot it down towards yep just like that down towards the substrate so there's no dead spot so i had to get a shot when we we're done putting them in as you can see there's one right there in the shallow area so we don't have to worry about sediment uh fish detritus any kind of gunk form in there and then as you can see we have one there pointing down and as you can see, it's kind of pointing at, at an angle. The reason why we have it that way is because we got it going, as you can see that one right there is a little bit more of a 90 degree. It's going towards right there, our bottom drain there. And then the last one is right there and we have that one going straight down. The reason why we have that one going straight down is because the waterfall, water's gonna be com coming in to the pond here. So that's automatically gonna cause a current to push towards the bottom drain. So this one here, we have it going straight down to get any kind of muck that's underneath the waterfall. We have the historical moment, my Ohana, is where we are going to add water to Tiki Falls 4.0. Now, as you can see, we have our meter right here. I'm gonna uh, just step over here. We got this bad boy all zeroed out. I'm gonna hold it just in case <laughs> It kind of kicks, but my boy Dennis, huh? Say the word. Uh, let her rip. I guess that's what we'll say, huh? There it goes. The meter is turning. It's official like a referee with a whistle. We are adding water to Tiki Falls. Each one of these is a gallon. When right. it goes all the way around the dial, that number's gonna turn. Each one of those is 10 gallons. Okay, so every time that number turns, 59, when it hits 60, that's 10 gallons of water that went into Tiki Falls 4.0. I don't know if I'm gonna cry. Am I gonna cry? I might cry right now. We're filling Tiki Falls up. You guys were always wondering when we're gonna add water. Well, today's the day we are adding water. Yes, we are. Hold on, let's give a, a, a pot, a pound right here. Yeah, right there on camera. It's slowly starting to fill up. You can see the water level down there on the bottom drain. But as we pan out here, you can see some hydrostatic pressure. This is what I was talking about earlier when we have the perforated pipe under the pond. So what's gonna happen is, as this pond fills up, the water weight is gonna push down, obviously, right? And all the water that's under the pond is gonna get pushed up. You can see there's some pressure here, some bubbles. The perforated pipe runs through here, under these stones, it goes right up here, and it goes, let me show you. And this is what I showed you guys on probably an earlier video of me digging a trench. I know exactly where it went. It went right here, right here, and then you can see the perforated pipe is down there. So what I'm going to do is kind of dig this up a little bit. We're gonna add this elbow and have it come up and it will drain out the back of the house under that fence there, which is just a big green belt. So I have no neighbors back there, just so you guys know. No neighbors behind me, so the water's just gonna drain out into the field or the grassy knoll that I call it. But uh, yeah, so what's gonna happen is that pressure's gonna get pushed through that hose. So I gotta dig this little trench a little bit more, throw in that elbow, and then obviously you can see we have, I have a little bit more pipe that I'm gonna extend and add to it so it pops up right about there. And then it will uh, just go out into the field. Thought I'd uh, just keep you guys posted on where that water is going to go. 
That's what they call hydrostatic pressure. This is called a French drain perforated pipe. So there's no holes in this pipe. This pipe is solid, but the pipe that's in the pond has holes in it. So the water goes inside that, the holes inside that, that uh, pipe and uh, exits the pond. So we don't have to worry about having hydrostatic pressure or the pond ballooning up if water goes under the pond, if that makes sense. This hydrostatic pressure, I tell you, it's, it's weird. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like all finished. So I pretty much just created a snorkel, formed a 90 degree elbow going up, added another piece of pipe about two feet or so. And then we actually put that little topper there. Um, and then we have somewhere where the water to exit. Once that hydrostatic pressure gets relieved, it's gonna come out through that pipe and travel all the way through and out towards the back of the green belt. Just wanted to show you guys what it looks like finished. All right, it is getting filled up. As of right now, this is 3,600 gallons. We've got the aerators on. We're actually dialing up the uh, pump and the jets. So uh, yeah, comment down below. Let me know what your guess is on how many gallons this is going to be. Look it, it's filling up. We got the jets going, the pump is pumping right now. So I just want to show you our jets, what it's looking like. So this is going to create the flow to push the muck, the fish waste and whatnot, they're all kind of angled towards the bottom drain, which is right there. We've got this jet over here, which is pushing water or a flow or a current towards the waterfall because the waterfall is going to be coming down right here. It's gonna push the flow and everything. Hopefully the idea is to push the muck and the junk towards the bottom drain. So Dennis actually put in the two weir stones there for the, uh, skimmer there so it's looking good this is what we've got going on right now you can see that one in the shallow area that's going to push a lot of that muck out of that shallow area which is kind of cool so anyway she's giving you an update Woo! the water's coming in it's going to fill up and go through each section of media now like we talked about in previous videos we have our airline hose our air stones are underneath the biomedia. So there's two different types of beneficial bacteria. There's anaerobic, anaerobic. One needs oxygen to thrive and the other one doesn't. Anaerobic um, is no oxygen. And that would be any beneficial bacteria that's developing in this section. And aerobic is beneficial bacteria that needs oxygen, which is this section. So we'll have two types of beneficial bacteria in this beautiful filter and as you can see the water's coming in here and it's going to fill up this entire filter and we're going to watch it go to work let's do a complete breakdown water enters through the inlet it goes through a series of brushes and then it trickles and cascades down into this section where the filter mats are and then the water goes through these filter mats comes from underneath and the water rises up through the biomedia and then cascades down into this section where we have our UV sterilizers, which aren't hooked up yet, but we're just giving you guys the lowdown. Goes through the outlet valve and this is just temporary because we wanted to get, uh, you know, the pump going and whatnot. And then as you can see, there is our flow of the waterfall coming out into the pond along with the jets we're going to ramp up the rpms on the pump so we can get more flow out of those jets you can see the jets really aren't pushing too much flow so that's easy to fix with this pump so that is what we're going to do but i'm also giving you guys the lowdown so tell me what you think down in the comments below we added water i would have never thought in a million years that we were going to get this thing up and going this summer it's insane we are so ahead of schedule even though it's taken me over a year to get this far just i don't know i just can't wait to show you guys what it looks like but don't worry we still got more footage we got to hook up the skimmer we got to hook up the uv sterilizers i got to show you guys what the submersible pond lights look like 
absolutely gorgeous at night. I would have never thought in a million years I would have something like this in my backyard. I gotta give a big shout out to my boy Dennis Rishi. Huge shout out to my boy Anthony over at Koi Enterprise. A huge shout out to Mountain Tree who provided this filter. A huge shout out to the Pond Digger, Eric Triplett, for this Helix Skimmer. And a big shout out to Pond Max for the submersible lights. I couldn't have done this build without you guys. Stay tuned, there's much more to come on Team Falls 4.0. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now this will give you guys a little bit of a Tiki Falls fix until the next one. Other than that, I will see you on the next video. Take care, much love, and aloha.